So the first step in building your go-kart alley kit is painting the frame. Now assuming you've already chosen a color for the frame, the next thing you have to do is decide which method is right for you in applying that color to your frame. I have painted a lot of go-karts for Go-Kart Alley and there are a number of options available to you of which I have used them all. So I'm going to go over those options, determine which ones are the best fit for you in your kit build. Now the first option available to you is powder coating. Now if you don't know what that is, let me explain. What they do is they take plastic, they grind it into a fine powder, and they mist it in the air. They apply a positive ionic charge to the plastic dust and they take the metal frame and they ground it with a negative ionic charge. The little plastic particles will stick to every nook and cranny, evenly coating the entire frame. Now it's just held on by a static charge. You could actually just wipe it off once they apply it. But they put a very liberal coating everywhere and they don't have to worry about it getting too thick anywhere because it only sticks to the, to the metal surfaces. After that, they roll it into an oven, bake it at 400 plus degrees, the plastic melts and coats every single bit of surface area everywhere in every hard to reach place and it makes a really great finish with a really great gloss it comes out just perfect and as soon as it's cool to the touch it's dry and it's ready to go now that's the upside to powder coating it's it looks great it's easy it covers every surface uh, there's a number of downsides to powder coating as well number one is you can't do it yourself unless you've got a giant powder coat oven big enough to put a go-kart in, so you have to take it somewhere to have it done. There's a cost involved. Depending on the shop you take it to, you'd have to check around your local suppliers. I've paid anywhere from $75 to $150, depending on the shop, to have a go-kart frame powder coated. So there's a cost involved. You have to take it somewhere to have it done. So that's part of a drawback. The plus side of that, it's really easy. You drop it off, they call you and tell you when it's ready, you bring it home, you go to building. Uh, there's also another plus to powder coating is that there are a lot of color options available. So they've even got, they've got one that almost looks exactly like chrome. There's a whole bunch of different colors around. That's a good plus, color options. The drawback to that, if the shop that you're using doesn't make color changes often if they're used to running a lot of black for like fence parts or something. They're not going to just tear down their oven to powder coat just one go-kart frame for you. They're going to wait till they're running other of that color so it may take a while so the lead time is longer or if they expected to just tear down because you need this thing that's going to cost a lot more. So there's another drawback to it. So there's pluses and minuses to both. Another minus is when it coats in all these holes and everything, sometimes will affect clearances of bolts and things. Uh, you have to be very careful uh, when you're applying your bolts. Like uh, a lot of the lock nuts that go into the kit have serrations on the back side. And if you spin that, it'll kind of fleck off the powder coating. So there's a drawback to powder coating. Another drawback is that you can't color match so easily. So if you happen to crash into a tree with your go-kart and you have to heat up and bend something, you're not going to be able to get that to match without getting some kind of spray paint and you're going to have a little bit of a mismatch there. Also, if you decide that you want to weld on some option, you have to grind all that powder coat off to be able to weld next to there and then paint up against it. So there's a number of drawbacks. But if you want for ease, you don't want to mess around, you want to drop it off, them tell you when it's ready, you pick it up and it look absolutely great, then powder coat is by all means your best option. Here lately when I've been building kits, I haven't had a lot of time. It's so easy to drop it off. They tell me when it's done. I pick it up. I go straight to building. So I've got a lot of love for powder coat. Powder coat was not an option when I restored all the vintage go-karts for Go-Kart Alley because they were so rusted that we had to use so much Bondo that the powder physically wouldn't stick to those Bondo spots. So it would have come out of the oven with all these blotches everywhere so that was not even an option to me so a big advantage with our kits and powder coat is that it is bare metal and there's no rust there's no paint there's no anything uh, powder coat shops love them because there's not a lot of work involved a lot of times they just do a little light hand sanding do a degreaser powder coat and put in the oven so it's a big plus for the kits that was not available other ways so there are so many positives to it if you're willing to forego the negatives and you want quick and easy, powder coat is definitely the way to go for you. If you decide painting is the way to go for you, the first thing you have to decide about paint is primer. 
Now a primer is designed to go on first to bond to all surfaces to allow the paint to bond evenly. Also in cases if you're doing a restoration like when we restored all the go-kart alley carts where we had patches of Bondo, where we had patches of old paint, where we had new metal, primer guarantees that you have one base color that's the same so that when your, your actual paint goes on you're not going to have brighter and darker shades of paint because everything started out with a very even gray. Now that being said, it's very important when choosing a primer to choose a primer that best fits your paint. Of the go-kart alley carts we use just rattle can primer and in my experience it didn't really hold up that well. So if you're serious about using primer and you want to have it on there, you want to get like the, the two-part epoxy self-etching, some kind of primer that's going to go on and adhere to the metal and just really draw in that paint and stick. Now if you're that serious about painting you probably already know more than me or you're gonna have to go find some other videos for some people primer is like you know wearing pants without underwear it just feels wrong so if you have to primer make sure and get the best fit primer for the paint that you decide when I restored the go-karts because we had some paint and some bondo and some not it was I had to put down the primer but when I built my first kit that was just bare metal I didn't have to worry about darks and lights and it being different now, in restoring all of those carts, I removed a lot of paint, and what I found from the manufacturer carts was none of them had primer down. The go-kart factories of the 60s, 70s, 80s were not building Ferraris, so they didn't worry about top-of-the-line paint jobs. What they did was they built it, they shot it with paint, they sent it out for us to destroy, which we did, very gratefully. So I found out as much work as it was removing all that paint when I built the orange crate kit from our orange crate video I decided I'm gonna shoot for the moon and I'm gonna go for no primer and in the end from all the paint jobs we had the paint without primer on bare metal has held up just as well as primer with paint and automotive paints so that's my two cents on primer you can make your own decision now when choosing a paint you can either go with automotive paint with hardener and clear coat applied with a gun or good old rattle cans. We painted three of our go-karts for the production using automotive paint and those were mostly because I wanted specific automotive colors. I wanted them to be durable because I knew we were going to be putting them through some abuse and I wanted it to stand up for the abuse. Uh, the first one was the General which we painted with GM Hugger Orange, just like the real General Lee. A quart of Hugger Orange, a quart of clear coat, and when he got it back, it looked phenomenal. The second one was the Rockford Heavy. Now, I wanted this to look like a uh, one of those ugly green sedans that the bad guys drove in the movies and TV shows in the 70s and 80s. The script actually called for fecal green, so I searched out that perfect ugly sedan color, and I came up with... Uh, dark yellow green and so that was a paint with hardener we did a clear coat afterwards I bought a cheap gun from Walmart uh, my neighbor has a body shop he showed me how to mix the paint mix the hardener and how to apply the clear coat he kind of helped me out with that one the last go-kart that we painted with automotive paint was the bullet cart now we never actually filmed an episode with bullet but I wanted to look just like Steve McQueen's bullet Mustang, so I got the actual dark Highland Green. This one I had all in one with clear coat, so I didn't have two steps. I just put the harder hardener in and go. There's a number of positives of that. If you're applying with a gun, you can get really good automotive primer to put down. You get exactly the color match you want. You get a good, hard, durable paint. Uh, negatives that I found was with the spray gun. It's really hard to get into all these places, and I found this hopper was always hitting on stuff. Now, if you're a really good painter, it's not gonna be a problem. You probably don't even need to be watching this video. But that's one drawback that I saw was hitting the other ones. I couldn't get these upside down angles, and I hit the paint a lot. There's a lot of places where I hit. Uh, other drawbacks besides that are the paint's expensive. There's a lot of trouble in mixing and a lot of cleanup afterwards, and it really wasn't my cup of tea, but it's what I had to do to get the colors I wanted. Now, if you're serious about making a really awesome paint job, this is definitely where you're gonna go. You're gonna wanna do some research besides this video, find some other videos, find some friends to help you get up. And if you got a paint job that awesome, I wanna see it. So make sure and send me some pictures or videos of that. 
The last paint that I want to talk about, and this is by far for painting go-karts my favorite, is the good old rattle can paint job. Because it's a DIY go-kart project. You're building it yourself. You want to take that ownership and just putting that paint on is good. Uh, there's a number of different options available in spray paints. And again, if you want those factory looking colors, if you want to look like your dad's 69 Camaro, or whatever you can get automotive paint colors from your local auto supply store this is sunburst gold metallic i bought from o'reilly's to paint rockford because in my mind's eye this looked exactly like jim rockford's firebird from the rockford files it's a really good paint it goes on really thin though because it's made for touch up on your car. If you've gotten a little scratch or something you want to touch it up, you don't want to have big thick globs and running, you want to just put a light coat on there. So it's made for that. So painting a go-kart takes a lot of these little cans and they're not cheap, so it costed a lot. For painting, the little parts like spindles, pedals, anything that you want to have a chrome look, please avoid spray chrome because it just looks like ghetto chrome. If you're gonna paint those things, you want them shiny, you want to you want them to be metallic silver because that way it's like it looks more like oh you wanted that to look silver instead of you wanted to go for chrome and you just went ghetto so silver not chrome even though the cap looks kind of chrome so for your little parts definitely this as far as the base color my absolute favorite is rust-oleum two times the coverage because it goes on thick it comes in the easy spray nozzle and sprays any angle so when you want to get these hard to reach places it's going to get everywhere upside down right side up just make sure and keep it shake up there's tons of colors i mean tons of colors available for you to choose from they're in readily supply and they'll still be there when you want to do touch-ups later so absolutely rust oleum two times coverage with a bare metal frame and no primer if you want to paint it yourself you want to have lots of color options and you want it to be as easy as possible and still doing it, you can't beat this because there's no setup, there's no cleanup, there's no mixing. You just grab it, spray any angle, and do it. So this is by my far my favorite, and it feels like you're really painting it. And if you get your technique down, there's no reason why your rattle can paint job can't look just as good as powder coat or automotive paint, which I'll be showing you how to do in our next video.